are learning something from lesson one, let us now proceed to lesson two, which is the processes and landforms along divergent boundary. Could you still recall what divergent plate boundary is? Yes, you're right. Divergent plate boundaries mostly happen under the oceans. As plates pull away from each other, a vertical space may extend deep down in the lowest layer of the crust is created. It is a rift valley. The force of separation creates a tension zone. A shallow earthquake may happen with this plate movement. Plate divergence is believed to be a slow, continuous process. As the plates move away, the gap between them increases. While this happens, materials from the mantle may rise, filling up the space. These materials pile up near the tension zone, forming a mountain-like structures called oceanic ridges. But new materials from the mantle may push the old ones. The filled up space between the plates becomes a new seafloor. The process is known as seafloor spreading. Have you tried eating a half-cooked egg? As you cut and open the white part with your spoon, what comes out of the cooked part? Yes, it is the half-cooked egg yolk. The divergence of plates is somewhat similar to splitting open egg as it opens the half-cooked egg yolk gradually flows out. When it cools down, it becomes solid. Before moving on to lesson 3, let us have a short recap on the different landform produced on divergent plate boundary. Could you still remember what geologic events or land formations take place whenever divergent plate boundaries split off with each other? One is formation of rift valleys in oceanic regions. There is occurrence of shallow earthquake and widening of ocean basin after long years. Let us proceed now to lesson 3 after acquiring so much information and knowledge on lesson 1 and 2. The next type of plate boundary is what everyone fears about these days. It is the transform fault boundary. With this type of boundary, another geologic feature is formed and events happen. In the transform fault, where plates slide past one another without the creation or destruction of crust, because rocks are cut and displaced by movement in opposite directions, rocks facing each other on two sides of the fault are typically of different types and age. These structures are so-called strike-slip faults. When strike slip movement halts due to increased friction at some location, stresses can build up that are released in sudden slips. This may result in some of the most damaging earthquakes on continental crust. The San Andreas Fault in California, USA is an example of huge strike slip faults transecting continental crust. Did you get it right? We're well done with our lesson today on the different geologic processes and landforms along plate boundaries. Have you learned something meaningful today? Let me check if you could still recall. In the convergence between oceanic plate and continental plate, why does oceanic plate subduct over a continental plate? Anyone who could answer this? Awesome! You've given a correct answer. For your assignment, kindly read and answer additional activity. You can find that on page 18 of your module and submit your output to your teacher. If you have some queries or point for clarifications, 
please don't hesitate to contact your science teacher. Congratulations, you've done a great job for you've learned something meaningful and useful to your life today, hoping that you could apply what you've learned in your day-to-day -day life. In tomorrow's lesson, we will be tackling about Earth's mechanism and have an advanced reading about it. Never stop learning because life never stops teaching. Goodbye, students, till we meet again. Have a blessed day, everyone. Bye-bye.